Okay, next up on the bench is the centipede board. My claim is that it does not boot. So uh, we're gonna take a quick peek. I did not see anything bad on this board, which is kind of nice. You know, we have the original sockets that the ROMs are in. The original socket for the CPU and the Pokey. Some more ROMs here. Uh, this is the NVRAM here. This is, I believe, this is the color prom. It's a prom, but I don't know. It may not be. I don't know if it's a color prom or not, but. This board actually looks pretty clean. So what we're probably going to do is we'll probably we'll just take a quick peek here. I'm not seeing anything that stands out. As far as damage, doesn't look like it's been reworked at all. Eh, maybe that a little bit. Up here. Doesn't look bad though. Okay, so let me move the camera here and hook up the adapter. Okay, camera set up. Uh, the adapter is hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and power this up and see what we get. And I don't see anything on the screen. Okay. Well, I don't see a power LED either. Interesting. Power LED normally right here shows the 5 volts. Now we did have one board before that a bad LED actually prevented it from booting. But let me grab my multimeter here it says if we look up at my power supply it says that it's pulling uh let's go to let's go to five point let's do five point two just for the heck of it. it says that the board is pulling two amps so grab my multimeter here let's see if we that on DC and ground and plus five to 4.7 so we're gonna bump up the power supply to five three and we're at 4.8 ish there uh, is there a five on the other hand? Yeah, we'll just take one of the pins then. 4.8. Uh, let me adjust my... I mean, it should be good enough. But, we'll bump it up to... Anyway. So... Five... Pretty steady. Okay. And we'll check the other end of the board. Yep, uh, all right, so voltage is good there. Uh, let's see, is there a plus 12 lug on here? There's plus 22, minus 22, plus or minus 15. Well, the minus 22 is interesting. Uh, that may be because of my adapter, actually. There's minus 5 there. Minus 5.1, close enough. Uh, what do we got for plus 15? 
Uh, all right so next thing we're gonna do put that aside let's go ahead and look at the scope Just pretend you're watching the Blurred Witch Project. All right. Grab my probe here. Uh, let's see if we have a clock. Are we not running? There we go. Yeah, we don't. Um, well, I guess I can turn the fluke on. Because uh, we'll probably be going to that next. So we are. What are we? At? Two volts per division. Oop, wrong channel. Go to five volts per division. So we're at five volts on that. That's good. 12 megahertz. No, oh, what is my divisions here? Uh, that's not what I want. Uh, wrong way. That's what I want. Really? Uh, that's supposed to be a 12 megahertz clock, huh? And that's claiming that it's one point whatever. It's off by a factor of ten. How about six? That's it. That's low, low, low. Okay, dokie. Let's take a look at the clock circuit. No clock, no game. Uh, they call it the synchronizer here. Okay, so we start mouse pointer here. We start at the crystal, go this way, go to a transistor, and then we all go into N1. So we just need to look at pin 1 and pin 2 and see what those are doing. N1, if I were N1, where would I be? So this is N1 here. So we want to look at pins one and two. So let's pin one. We can see it's 12 megahertz, which is what we want. Pin two is not. Okay, so pin two, if you look at the schematics here, let me tilt this down so you can see it. I'll even zoom in. So this is an 04, so whatever comes in here is inverted to out here. So. If you have a 1 here, it should come out a 0 here. If you have a 0 here, it should come out a 1 here. So you should be getting, essentially, 
the same thing in as you are getting out, just inverted. And we're getting pin 1 is showing us 12 megahertz, and pin 2 should be showing us 12 megahertz as well, but it is not. So let's take a look here. That is an 04. So I think we're going to start by looking at what that goes to now. Well, let's see if I'm feeling it to see how hot it is. It's What does that one go into? So N1, pin 2, we follow it along. It goes into N2, nope, sorry, P2, then it goes in N2, and then finally M2. So I mean, one of those could be clobbering it. But we're going to start with this one here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that, socket it, and then uh, see if that fixes our problem. That'd be a nice easy fix, wouldn't it? Alright. So we'll go ahead and aim the camera down. Turn our power off here. Turn that on. Turn that on. Disconnect. All right. Nobody's done anything to that chip, but Oop. that's coming out of the bottle way faster than it should. Okay. Probably can't see that on video. Should be able to see it. Bend it over. Yeah, it bent over a little bit. <clears throat> no, that one did not want to come out. All right, so we need to put a little more solder on that to get that out. It's a stubborn pin. Might be ground or power. Solder on there. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do then it's not wiggling at all. So we're gonna take the iron. Optionally you can cut it out and then just desolder the legs, but I just kinda like to keep the chips so I'm just pressing on these to see if they're free. Like this one here might not be free as it should be. Or if you really want to be safe, cut it out. I mean, an 04 chip is pretty damn common and pretty cheap, so I just prefer to try to. But you run the risk of very, 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 very little pressure here when you do this. You put too much pressure in it. You force it, you'll likely rip a trace. Let's just hope I don't do that. Just wiggle it out if you can. force it too hard because you might pull a pad, you might rip a trace. But that came out nice and clean. Nice and clean. Two, four, six, seven, so it's 14 pin chip. 14 pin chip needs a 14 pin socket. Mm, how about that? First guess. On this so solder I don't know if this is coming across may or may not be if it's not then well sorry about that that's a worm that one in. There we go. Make sure they're square and flush. More fancy camera work. I need to figure out how to mount my camera overhead probably so that it's a better view. One of these days I'll figure it out.
little bit extra, a little bit extra on that one. So, one new socket. Ta -da. Now, just for the heck of it, since I have a fancy tester, Select 74 series, uh, 14 pin, so we want negative and 17. All right. Oh, it's not 17, 7. Learn to read. That would make sense. And then it's going to probably want it in 48. Yep. Let me turn this so I can actually see what the heck I'm doing there. There we go. Ready to test. Uh, let me get my needle nose pliers here. I mean, really, I shouldn't even have to do this. I'm just doing it for the exercise. And to see how, see what this thing says, you know, see if this thing confirms what my original test was. So I'm just flattening all the legs so that they're not bent. You can tell this chip is ugly looking. It's got corrosion and crap on the top of the legs. That won't necessarily mean it's bad, but it's not a good thing. Okay, test. Yeah, it says passed. Interesting. Well, we're going to put another one in there and see if this thing's lying to me or not. 74 LS04. And my chip straightener. What did I do with that? Ah, it's right. A snake, it would have been. That says an HC04, but close enough. So if this doesn't fix that, bent a freaking pin. too quick on the pushing that in. And that smashed it right up in there. Boom. Bad, bad Brian. carefully very very carefully and a little bit as good as old right now we just have to make sure that when we put it in there again that we don't bend that damn pin again that pin's still a little cockeyed Try that again. This time we're going to make sure. There we go. All right. It's 
something tells me that that is going to be a okay when it shouldn't be. Fired up, see what we get. Something tells me though it's not gonna be any different. Power up, power up, power up. Anything? Nothing there. So then we're gonna go back to the scope. Pin one. 12 megahertz, pin 2, well, okay, that's interesting, uh, fancy, fancy camera work, pin 1, 12 megahertz, pin 2, 12 megahertz. So that chip was in fact bad. Interesting that the tester said it was not. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to get a second opinion on that. second opinion I mean my top max because the top max is capable of testing chips too and this is why my friend does not like chip testers it's because they can lead to false results So, put the chip in my tester, and then we're going to go to, or into my top max, I should say, and we'll go to IC test, select 7404, test. Interesting. So it likes it too. But in circuit, we're not getting what we expect. All right, well, we're just gonna leave the new one in there because it definitely likes it better. Now the 12 megahertz test point is giving us 12 megahertz which it was not before so then we're going to look at the 6 megahertz test point and that's interesting 6 megahertz is not giving us 6 megahertz so there's still something wrong in the clock 4h uh, i don't believe that is correct that's just bouncing all over the place, too. Okay, back to the schematics. Uh, we can close that. Come back to our schematics. Alright, so we know that the 12 megahertz is good. So the 12 megahertz there should be a symbol for a tab over here, but I don't see it. Unless it's coming through something else. Well, there's 4H right there. 6 megahertz is here. Okay. So, we are, we are not getting 6 megahertz. So, we need to look at what 6 megahertz is hooked up to. Follow it up here, up here. 
up here off of P2. P2 comes off of QA. So we need to look at P2 uh, pin 14. There's our scope. P2 pin 14. That is. So this is. Eight, so that's 16, 15, 14. And 14 is not giving us 6 megahertz. Okay, so it's possible that the counter is bad. Or one of the inputs to the counter is bad. So we need to look at pin 2. Pin 2 should be 12 megahertz. I would expect that to be the case. That is 12 megahertz according to the scope. So the clock in is good. And let me move that a little over to the side so I can see it a little better. Okay, so let's take a look at pin 3. We're going to look at pin 3, 4, and 5. Yeah, three, four, five, six. Those are the inputs. So three. Uh, three looks like it's floating. Four's floating. Five. Six. And what I mean by floating is if you look at the signal here, that's set to five volts. If I let go of it, that's zero volts. And then I do it again, and it goes a little bit above zero. I don't know if it actually lists what it's getting on there. Doesn't look like it. But it's barely above zero. So it's kind of just floating right above ground. Uh, although, that may be okay. Because I these don't have any connectors on them, so those probably should be floating. So it's probably ten seven, one ten seven and nine that is going to affect the counter. Fifteen is an out. Uh, so let's take a look then at pin one. What do we get on pin one? Pin one, we're getting five volts, so it, and it's high. Okay. So this is going to be an eight, nine, ten. Ten is high. So seven should be the same. Seven is the same, which I would expect because ten and seven are tied together. So what is 9? Nine? 9 is always high. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> so, none of those are pulsing. The clock is pulsing. But 1, 7, 10, and 9 are not pulsing. Okay, so where do... PR10. What is PR10 and where where does it come from? We've already established well N1 pin five. Let's look at that real quick. Over here, one, two, three, four, five. That is not six meg. Uh, 
Okay. But pin six is? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, how can pin six be six megahertz, but pin five not be? That doesn't make any sense to me. Let's take all right, let's take a look at that. Because pin five is the input. And pin six should be the output. Let's just bring up the data sheet to confirm that. Data sheets, 7404. Five is the input, six is the output. So how the heck am I getting a faster speed on the output than I am the input on, oh, which is essentially an inverter. That doesn't make any sense. What am I missing? One, two, three, four, five. So here's what I'm seeing on pin five. That it's kind of all over the place. But the output is six freaking megahertz. That doesn't make any sense to me. Something in the clock circuit is definitely screwed up. Uh, what else we got over here? PR11. Take a look at V-Sync. Uh, right, let's take a look at the clock on the CPU. One point four megahertz. So it's getting divided down correctly. Where is V-Sync? the tab for it. So I'm pretty sure there's a tab for it. You'd think I'd know where it's at at this point. There it is. V-Sync and H-Sync. V-Sync. That's not good. How about H sync? H sync is dead. Okay. H sync and V sync are dead. Definitely some issues in the clock circuit. Smashed, nothing bent over. All right, let me study the schematics here and find a few things. All right, I'm back. I uh, missed something on a physical examination before, and this might explain why we have no H sync. But if you look at this pin right here. It looks like it's a little screwed up, and I'm not sure what the heck. Uh, where 
where is that ship? Uh, that's over there. That one right there. What the heck is going on with that? Maybe somebody tried to reflow the solder or something on that ship. I'm going to socket that chip and see what the heck's going on with that pin. Because this is part, this is the one that controls the H sync, and our H sync is dead. So let me go ahead and socket that just to, so I can pro possibly clean up that pin and eliminate that chip as being an issue. Alright, let, let me do that. Okay, this is the chip that I'm going to replace. And as you can see, there's been no rework done on it. So I'm not sure what the heck is going on with that one pin. Looks like somebody did some rework on this one. Maybe on that one. Looks like they may have just reflowed the solder on these two pins, on these two chips. But that chip is very interesting as to why the heck it has that blob on the other side alright let me go ahead and replace it okay new chip in an M3 didn't fix the issue didn't expect it to but that one leg was kind of annoying so I wanted to replace it anyway uh, let's take a look at this H-Sync is still dead So let's take a look at H sync. It's it's not dead, it's resting. V sync, that does not look right. That looks way too sporadic. I would expect V sync to be a lot more even than that. And the V sync, I mean what it's calculating up here is around 750 looks like it goes between 620 and 750 Hertz which for V-Sync is not correct it should be 15 so what 16.8 Hertz 15 or is it 15.6 Hertz somewhere around there I don't remember right off the top of my head I'd, uh, but I know it definitely is not that. Okay, so 12 megahertz, we're still at 12 megahertz. 6 megahertz, we are not at 6 megahertz. So we still have to track that down. Uh, 4H, come on 4H. don't think that's what 4H is supposed to be. I'll have to look at the schematics again to see how it what it wants for 4H but that is definitely not it. Let's just look at the CPU real quick. Pin 40 it's pulsing. Pin 40 is reset so the CPU is constantly resetting which is not surprising, it's probably watchdogging. Because we don't have a, the correct sync. Alright, let's take another gander at the. Uh, schematics here. This is a Rev 1 board, so I went ahead and brought up the schematics for the Rev1 board. But it, looking at this one versus the Rev4 doesn't look like it's changed at all. So let's get a little bit better angle on that hopefully. Uh let's see. So 
six megahertz comes out off of P2 pin 14. And we looked at P2 pin 14. So that'd be 16, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 16, 15, 14. Hold your probe on it, and yeah, it's nowhere near six megahertz. <clears throat> So that counter has an issue. Now this being the first counter in the chain. All right, so let's look at 13. What is 13 doing? 13 is pulsing. Uh, 12 is pulsing. What, what, alright, so 13 was what? 13. It's kind of going all over the place, too. Not as bad as the other one, but it, it's still not steady. 12. I can keep the probe on there. Four. So in theory, you have 1H, 2H, 4H. Each one of those should be double of, so 2H should be double of 1H, 4H should be double of, or do I have that? I might have that backwards, it might be half. Half of. Okay, well that's kind of interesting. I wonder what the heck happened to this board here. Let's take a look. We need to examine this a little bit better. We're going to take a look at... Got M2. Is it that one? Was it M? Yeah. M2. See, it has something on that pin, too. On that pin there, it has something funky. And then if you look at this, if we can get to the side of this. Hopefully it'll focus in here. See if I can zoom in here and let it still focus. That is weird looking. That is the power rail. And then if you look at this pin, it's like there's no solder there. Looks like there's no solder on the ground. Maybe it's soldered on the other side, but that is weird looking. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do that chip too. Take a look at it in the schematics. Yeah, it's a counter in the. It is a counter in. So this counter, this counter, and this. These are the three counters uh, that we're looking at on the schematics. I might just reflow the solder on that one. I don't think I need to replace it yet. But I don't know what the heck that stuff is. It looks like it's flux, but nobody's done any rework on it. That is weird. All right, let me reflow the solder on that chip. Okay, somebody has done rework on this particular chip. 
Uh, you can tell they didn't clean it up. It's got a bunch of flux still on it. I'm going to redo it. And we'll see go from there. Okay, I went ahead and just socketed this chip. Since somebody had done work on it prior, I, won't, I just pulled the chip to make sure that they didn't do any damage underneath, which they didn't. It was okay, so I just went ahead and put a socket in and put the chip in. Back in. It's still the original chip. Uh, and we're still going through the clock circuit, trying to figure out why the heck we're not getting what we're supposed to be getting. Uh, so, and apparently I do not have any 163s, so I'm going to have to order some of those or steal it off another board. Interesting to see this is an 8114, this is 7912, 8114, so somebody, I think somebody did replace this one because that looks like an older date code. This is an older chip than these two. So, yeah, that one has been replaced, but they just soldered it directly back into the board. Didn't do a great job either because there was some solder missing on some of the pins. Uh, all right, let me, I'll have to order some parts here, but uh, I'll keep looking as well. Okay, I have another centipede board on my bench that was supposedly working until I looked at it and noticed that the crystal's broken off of it. This is supposedly a working centipede board and I wanted to compare the clock here to the other one that I'm actually working on. So I'm going to have to fix this crystal here and see if this board works. And if that does, then we'll go through... Uh, the clock circuit and see what we get all right put in a new crystal for this board and as you can see it's working so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the clock circuit and I'll point this at the scope and we'll show you what each one of this the lugs should look like and uh, what each pin on the different chips and stuff in the circuit should look like. And then we'll go from there. Okay, what we're going to do in this video is go through the sync circuit on a centipede and show you what it should look like. And you can see that I have a working centipede going here. And this is, take a look at the schematics here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at, uh, we're going to start at N1. We're going to look at pin 2. I don't know why my audio on my centipede's going funky, but... That might be the adapter. Uh, and then we're going to look at pin 1. and I don't know why they labeled it that way. 2 and 1. But it should be going into pin 1 out pin 2. So whatever, both sides of these should be pretty much the same thing. Okay, then we're going to follow it up to the counter. Uh, so this actually does not connect to the, that counter. It connects all the way up to the counter at M2. Somebody has labeled all these. These are probably uh, the signatures for the cat box. which I could hook up my cat box and we could take a look at the signatures and compare them. Uh, but the, well, it taps into, it does not say that it taps into this. And that could be an error in the schematics, but 
because it taps into this counter and it taps into this counter. Okay. So what we should be getting once we get to this counter is we should be getting 6 megahertz out of it. And then when you go the, you have 1H, 2H, 4H, that's one horizontal, two horizontal, four horizontal, and then you'll see in other places in the schematics where it has 1V, 2V, etc. So this should be 6 megahertz, this should be half of that, this, so this should be 3 megahertz, then this should be 1.5 megahertz, and then this should be 750 kilohertz, so it's one half, each one progressively should be one half of the, the previous one. Uh, that's not necessarily true in all cases, like in Missile Command, Missile Command does some weird stuff, but we're not going to get into that yet in this video here. I'll have to look at a Missile Command video or something. Uh, so if we come over to here, you can see the 1, 1V, 2V, 4V, 8V. Okay. And that's. See, so you have horizon, and then 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning here. Uh, the, and there's also test points that we can look at on the board. So you have 12 megahertz here, then you have 6 megahertz here, and then 4H, which is off of that counter. So since they put a lug on the board for 4H, 4H is probably used for other things that are important, so that's why they put a lug on there, so that you can check the value of that. We'll go into that. Uh, this chip here is the N1, so it's going to go into pin 1 and out pin 2, and there's other pins on there that are used for other things, but we're not going to get to that yet. We're just going to start with the very beginning of it. Alright, so let's go to here. And hopefully that'll show up well enough on there. Let me go ahead and change this to 2 volts per division. So that means that's 2 volts, that's 4 volts, and halfway in here will be 5 volts. Over here on the right hand side it should show you the speed. Some people don't like the automatic stuff, but I, I say if it's close enough, then I'm not worried about it. If it's way off, then that's when I start to take a look at other things. Alright, so 12 megahertz. You can see it says up here 12.09 which is close enough. Uh, let's zoom in I guess here. Uh, where? I guess let's set my trigger here. What, uh, I don't want to trigger off channel 4 anymore. Trigger off channel 1. Run. And single. Let's run that again. Ah, uh, my not. Probably not holding the probe on there good enough. There we go. All right. So we've frozen it. Then we can go into our measure. Channel one. Uh, let's see if I remember how to do uh, That's position. Oh, cursor's what I want, sorry. I believe. Manual. Okay, so then if you don't trust the automatic stuff, then you can do manual. And what you want to do is 
on the trailing edge, you can do this either way, is you start it where it starts to go down. Uh, switch to the other one here. And then you need to get to the bottom of that one. I'm using the wrong damn knob again. Uh, do I have it set wrong here? Oh. Is it gonna be, it's not gonna be that, is it? No. Sorry. I lied on this one. Uh, it depends on how I have it set up. I'd have to look at how I have it set up. But peak to peak, you know, we're at 11.9 up here. I don't know if you can read that. Which is close to 12. The scope, probably a little bit more accurate than my manually moving. Uh, so we're looking at basically 12 megahertz. That's why I use the automatic for most of the stuff. It's a lot easier than trying to fiddle with it. So it's, uh, you can ignore the tra trailing edge. This is the leading edge coming up. So the probably, actually, you want to go center to center. Uh, it's been a while. I'm going to have to remember how to do this. Okay, we're going to try a different angle here. See if this is easier to see the scope or not. Let's start with 12 megahertz. And I don't know if you can see right here. It shows that it's 12.09, which is close enough to 12. And that's on the test lug. Then we go to 6 megahertz. 604, close enough. And that's about half of the 12s. So, because the 12 was what? 12.098 versus 6049 so yeah it's about half not exact okay so then now we start it in n1 pin 1 and we're at 12 megahertz there so and this output should also be 12 megahertz it's just slightly inverted well it's slightly inverted it is inverted we look at this and then look at that. That, that. All right. So then we're going to go to P2. And P2. Is right here. And we're going to look at pin 2. Pin 2 is 12 megahertz. That's the clock. And then pin 3. Nope, pin 14, sorry. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 16, 15, 14. Yeah, hold the probe on there. It's a little. Alright, 14, that is 6 megahertz, like it should be. So then 13 should be half of that. And that's 3 megahertz. And then 12 should be half of that. And we're looking at 1.5. And, and then we should, um, the next pin after that is 11, which should be half of that, which should be what, 750. And then we're going to go to the next chip, which is going to be N2. And N2, we're going to start looking. We can look at N2. 
pin two should be the the clock, which is 12 megahertz, which is good. And then we're going to go to pin 14. Pin 14 on this chip is 8H, which should be one half of 750, right? Uh, pin 11, P2, no that's not pin 11, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so 756, that, that is uh, pin 11 of P2 into pin 14 is 378. Let's go ahead and dial that in so you can see it a little better. Okay, so then we're going to go to 13. Thirteen is supposed to be sixteen H. Oops, uh, sorry, I was uh, doing something, creating some sort of problem on the board there. Uh, so sixteen, fifteen, fourteen. Fourteen is three seventy-eight approximately, so half of that. On the next one, one eighty-nine. And then on the next one, that is going to be half of that, 94. And then half of that is 47. Now, it's not going to be an exact half, uh, but it's going to be pretty close. So if we do... Let's turn another channel on here. So you can kind of get an idea here. Channel 2. Uh, where is my channel 2? Channel 2 is... We need to make sure we're on the right voltage. We want to be oh, wrong way. 2 volts per division. Alright, so just to give you an idea here. This is uh, 16, 15, 14, 13. So 13, and then if you look at this one, uh, let's pick a better one so that you can see. Actually, we I'm going to flip these around so you can see. You can see that there's twice as many of the yellow as there is blue. It's a little hard to tell on that. If I did a... Let's see if I can do this with a... I need longer arms. So you got yellow, 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 and then you got the blue. Uh, let's see, can I move the blue down? Yeah, let's move the blue down so it's a little easier to see. So you can see that there's twice as many of those as there are there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, one, two, three, four, five essentially six. So it's like five and a half, right? So that's what we're looking for when we go through the clock. Is each one should be one half of the previous one. Get rid of the channel two. So that gets us to N2. Uh, let's see, pin 11, that was... 
9, 10, 11. Okay, now this one. So the next one is going to be, we're going to go to M2. M2. And then we're going to go to pin 2. That should be our 12 megahertz. And then we're going to go to pin 14. Uh, so that's 16, 15, 14. That's 15 kilohertz. So then 13 should be half of that. Uh, well, I, no, that, uh, that's not true because of the way the counter is wired up. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much what the counter should look like on a working centipede. So now what we should do is hook up the bad one and go through each one of those. So let me do that. Okay, now we're on the bad version of the board. Let's go ahead and power it up. We're gonna start with the 12 megahertz lug and 12.09 which is what we want and we look at the six megahertz and it's six megahertz which is good now we go to pin one of n1 and that is 12 megahertz and pin two is 12 megahertz which is what we want so we know that that's good now we're going to go to the first counter, which is P2. We're going to look at pin 2. We got a good clock in, 12 megahertz. So pin 14 should be 6, and it is. So then 13 should be half of that. It is. Okay, then we go to 12 which should be half of that. It's one and a half. 11, 750. Okay, so we know that, that counter appears to be working. So then we're gonna go to pin two of N2. So N2, pin two, it's 12 megahertz is good. Then we go to pin 14. And pin 14 is no go. See that one should be half of what 11 was on this one. That's 9. Yes. So this one was 750. So then pin 13, that's 14 there. Pin 14 should be half of 750. And it is basically nothing. So that's dead. That's dead. And that's 9, 10, 11. So that counter looks like it's dead. <laughs> However, we're going to go ahead and uh, get out the multimeter and check continuity between all the pins and where they're supposed to go to make sure that there's no broken traces or anything like that, because the counter might not be bad. So we need to verify that first. So I'm going to power down. And then we're going to 
gonna get the multimeter out. Switch it to continuity. Okay, let me set the camera up here so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so N2 is the one that we're having an issue with. So what we want to do is we want to find where, so we're not getting anything off of 14, 13, 12, or 11. So we want to make sure that pin 2 is connected. We want to make sure pin 10 and 7 are connected because those come from P2, pin 15. So, and this pin 2 here comes from N1 pin 2. So we're going to look on the board here. Uh, let's go ahead and see if I can do this this way. Okay, so pin 2 from N1. So this is N1. And we're going to go from pin 1 pin 2 of that and then that should go to pin 2 of each of the counters so the counter there counter there counter there so that's good so now we need to look at P2 pin 15 so that is P2 pin 15 and that one should go to pin 7 and pin 10 so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's eight, nine, and ten. So we have connectivity between all those pins. Uh, so it looks like if we look at the schematics again, pin nine on all three of those counters should be connected, it looks like because they're all going to the P comma R10, which I'm not exactly sure what that dis description means. If you know what that means, put it in the comments. But they should all be connected. Uh, so pin nine here, nine here, oh really, no nine here, huh? Why are we not getting a nine there? Interesting. We got nine and nine here, right? But not between here and here. M2, pin nine. Oh, okay. Uh, pin nine on that one is... Pin nine on that chip is actually connected to N1, pin eight. So you follow this around and which so it comes out of M2 pin 15 goes into pin 9 then it's inverted and it's put back into here uh, which is kind of odd but hey I, I'm not a designer so I don't know why they're doing it it just seems a little weird that it's feeding back into itself but hey whatever works all right so that means M2 pin 9 actually let's go pin 15 that one should go to pin 9 on N1 and this is N1 we got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so then 8 should go to pin 9 that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so we have continuity between all of these. So what that's telling me then is that counter is bad. 
Unfortunately, I do not have any counters in stock right this second. And looking up on my, looking up to there to see if I have them. And I do not have any 163s. It goes 161 and 174. All right, so we'll have to hold off until I can order some of those. And I bet once I replace that one, this board will start behaving a lot better. At least that's the hope. Uh, well, in the meantime, though, we can check the other counters. So that's the horizontal. Let's check the vertical while we're at it. There's only two of those. So P3 and N3. Let's... I'm going to put you back looking at the scope. Zoom in a little bit here. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get my multimeter out of the way. And we want to look at the scope. I'm going to power the board up. And we're going to start by looking at pin 2 on P3. That's pin 2. And... Oh, okay. Yeah. We're not running 12 megahertz off of that. We are running off of whatever 256H is supposed to be. 256H comes off of comes off of here this is M2 comes off of 256H and then we goes to N1 pin 11 comes I think those are backwards should be 10 and 11 so then it comes out and it feeds into P3 right here so, what we need to do is look at what is coming out of M2, going into N1, so we'll just look at N1, and then we can look at, well, we need to look at both sides of N1 to see what's going in, what's coming out, if they're the same, then we're fine, uh, and then we'll go back from there. Alright, so we wanted to look at N1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's 252K. And 11. 252K. So what's going in is what's coming out, which is fine. So P3, pin 2 should be 252K. So pin 2, P3 is 252k so that's good so now 1v which is pin 14 should be one half of that so it's 125 125 times 2 is 250 uh, and then so then we go to pin 13 Oop, come on pin 13 63 so we're looking at well, that one was 125. Got to make sure my probe is on there because it's a little dirty. You might have to scrape a little bit of garbage off. So 125 divided by two. And what do we get here? Seven. 63. Eh, 120. 126 versus. 125. I guess you could say that's pretty close to half. Okay, then half of that is 30-ish. Again, we're not looking for exact. We're looking for close enough. Uh, and then we're at 15. 
on pin 11. Okay, and then we're going to go to pin 2 of N3, which should be our 256, 252. Then we're going to go to pin 14. Okay, we'll why do what are we getting on pin one here? Pin one's always high. And pin one was always high on that one, yeah. I believe pin one is clear on the counters. Uh all right, so where will we begin here? We are on N3, pin two was two, 252, but, uh, so what, pin 11 on that one was 13, 15K, so half of 15, 7.6, yeah. Uh, then 3.8, 1 1.9, 9.58, it looks like. So we're essentially half each time, so. The counter appears to be working as it should. It's just the so we're having a problem with this one counter at N2. So once I get a new one of those in, then we can test. Let's swap it out, test it, and then hopefully we get a good clock. Because if we look at our vertical sync that seems a little low it's 958 vertical should be faster than that uh, or sh let's see no vertical should be a lot slower than that I would think we'll take a look at the other centipede board and see what it says H-Sync is crap. So let me uh, hook up the other centipede board again and let's see what it shows for V-Sync. Okay, working centipede board is turned back, plugged in, turned back on. So vertical sync. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Uh, so we have a problem in our vertical sync on the other one too. So we should be right around 60 hertz. That's the refresh rate of the monitor. And horizontal sync should look like this. Uh, go the other way. It should be about 15.7, 15.8, 15.6, right around that area. And that's how long it takes to go from this side to this side of the screen. So if we're looking at, so N2 was bad on the other one. So 14, 13 and all that were all hosed. So 14 on this one. Thirteen. Twelve. And eleven. You can see that it gets bigger each time. Okay. That's on a working centipede board. So, I definitely need to get a new 163 and replace that on the other board. I should check my stash of other centipede boards and see if I have one socketed that I can steal from. Okay, replaced the, ones, the bad 163 with a good one. Oh, that one, right? Yeah, that one. Uh, with a good one. And now, we have a working game. Let's, uh... Let's 
trackball set up, but it's still working. So, this one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace the sockets here. And replace these two sockets here and these two sockets over here. Uh, and then we're going to call this good. Okay, sockets replaced. Let's go ahead and just recap what I did on this, which wasn't really that much other than having to go through all the steps of checking the circuit. As far as replacing, the only thing that got replaced was this 163, which was bad, which was throwing the clock off, which was giving us the black screen. Uh, I went ahead and replaced all the crappy sockets. So these are all new. Those were good. Those two sockets were good sockets. And then I replaced these two sockets. And everything else seems to be working just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Well, it is finished, I guess. So that's it. Thanks for watching.